Welcome back. Now we can discuss neural adaptive control because we learned neural networks in the previous video. All right, neural adaptive control, or more precisely, model reference neural adaptive control, and here the word neural coming from the neural networks. Okay. Um, we now deal with this system. What is different than before? We have an unstructured uncertainty. We learned from the previous video, over a compact domain D, we can approximate this unstructured uncertainty according to this radial basis function neural network. Here W is p-dimensional unknown weight to be estimated by the parameter update law. Theta, we reconstruct this based on radial basis functions. So it is basically P1 by a vector, including um, its elements include radial basis functions. And this is a bounded residual error. We mentioned that as we include more neurons, more ne radial basis functions, we can make this error smaller. And of course, after this video, um, I am going to immediately upload, upload a MATLAB uh, simulation example to illustrate this precisely. Then you are going to know how to implement neural adaptive control architectures. All right. Now, when you insert this delta to this equation, you arrive this. Now, because of this residual error, if you use um, uh, standard adaptive control formulation without parameter object uh, operator or leakage modification, you cannot have V dot less than or equal to zero. Um, so you can do this for yourself and see basically analysis won't work. So here we, as uh, we discussed in the projection operator video or the leakage modification video, we need to use either a projection operator or a leakage modification in the parameter update law to ensure boundedness of the closed loop system. Um, and I, uh, I taught you both modifications in the previous videos. Without loss of any generality, we, here I am going to use a leakage, more precise, the sigma modification term in the <coughs> um, weight update law. Um, all right, so let's do this. We are looking at this system over the compact domain epsilon. Here is our nominal control law, and here is our a neural adaptive control signal, W hat multiplied by the theta, including radial basis functions. W hat dot has this gamma learning rate, um, this radial basis function, x minus xr, and sigma W hat, this is the sigma modification leakage term. And here is the reference model. And when you deal with such systems, this is the control signal that you need to implement. I am forming here the error, the W tilde, the way that we always do, and E dot becomes this. Now we also have this epsilon pops up here, residual approximation error, and W tilde is W hat minus W. W is constant, and W tilde becomes this, including the um, uh, this leakage term. Now, since we are using a leakage term, if W tilde is time varying, then you have W dot here, you will have an extra term here. The following analysis also holds for the case your W is time varying. So um, I don't include it to the equation, but um, similar to how we did before, um, it, if it is time varying, that's okay. You can still use the same adaptive control law. All right, so here is the Lyapunov function candidate. I am now going to take the derivative of, time derivative of this positive definite Lyapunov function. So V dot is E, E dot, and W tilde, W tilde dot. I am inserting these equations here. And I am now um, playing with terms. First of all, this term will cancel out uh, with this term, error is here. These are the same structure. One over gammas will uh, cancel. So this term will cancel with this term. This remains 
Um, and this W tilde, I am going to, a W hat, I am going to write it as W tilde plus W. So we have these two terms remaining and this term remaining that I use this. Now I am keeping this nice negative term. I am going to take the second nice negative term, putting it here. The sign indefinite terms that can be positive or negative, I am going to put them here. I, uh, these are the bad guys, these are the good guys. Um, <laughs> I should teach controls like this, bad guys, good guys. Anyway, um, so this term, I am applying, applying Young's inequality like we did several times now in the previous videos. This is upper bounded by this. I am applying Young's equality like this. D1 is an arbitrary constant. I am also applying Young's inequality to this term. This is upper bounded by this. Now we are using norms because they are no longer, we cannot use absolute values. This is no longer a uh, scalar. I am applying Young's inequality to these terms. Then you arrive this. Now, if this is time varying, you need to include here its upper bound. Since it is constant, I can leave it, it as it is. Because eventually, remember, when we apply uh, comparison principle, this the all these terms needs to be constants. So you cannot include any time varying functions on these constant terms. So you need to use their upper bounds. All right, so when you use this these terms resulting from um, Young's inequality, by the way, D2 is also arbitrary constant, then you end up having these equations. Now, since D1 and D2 are arbitrary, I can always choose them to make this D3 and D4 positive. So that's the requirement and that's nice thing. They are arbitrary. Choose them if necessary, small. And um, D5 includes the neural networks approximation term that is um, coming from the epsilon is basically e of x it is upper bound is epsilon bar uh, we told you based on the approximation it is constant if you include more neurons to your theta this epsilon bar gets smaller and this term is mainly coming from the sigma modification um, all right, so now uh, as D3, D4, and D5 are defined, we can now proceed to the last step, which is similar to the previous videos, uh, comparison, uh, comparison principle we are going to use. For this purpose, we need to rearrange things such that Lyapunov equation pops up on the right-hand side. So we have this minus D3, minus D4, and D5 terms. Um, for this term, I am multiplying by 2, dividing by 2. The second one, I am multiplying by 2 alpha, dividing by 2 alpha. Because these terms basically form the Lyapunov function candidate, so to, I am taking its upper bound by using the minimum of either this one or this one, which I am going to call it d sigma. I do it this because if you use this minimum, you can combine these terms like this. This is the your Lyapunov function V. So you arrive to this nice, beautiful form that you can apply comparison principle. We discussed this comparison principle um, yeah, basically uh, pre before. So I am directly applying now. V now upper bounded by this plus this, so we ensure boundedness of the uh, closed loop system trajectories E and W tilde. It cannot grow infinitely, and in fact, it uh, as T goes to infinity, this term vanishes, so the constant bound you have on V is D5 over D6. This means that eventually this is bounded by D5 or D6, so that error and W tilde are bounded. And um, it, so D5 and D6 are important, turning back to the previous slide, for example, D5. It is nice that this upper bound on the Lyapunov is small as possible. For this, you can use large adaptation gain, smaller sigma modification term, and use sufficient neurons to make epsilon bar small. If you do that, remember, this will be eventually upper bounded by D5 over D6. 
So d5 plays a direct role, so you need to make d5 small or d6 uh, large. Um, um, so you need to consider both d6 and d5 together. Um, but d5 is more directly affecting here, so you can make epsilon uh, large. Um, and sigma modification term um, small. All right, so I mentioned that at the end of the neural networks previous video that the analysis that you do when you use um, neural networks in adaptive control, the analysis you are going to get will be sem semi-global since neural network approximation holds over the compact set. This means that as long as X stays in D, you are uh, good. Um, how to ensure that X always stays in this compact domain D? Here are your three options. First, insert more neurons to cover, cover to make the arbitrary large, cover a larger set. This is your option one. And option two, if you don't want to insert more neurons for some reason, I mean, these days processors are very fast, so this is no longer a big issue. But if we were living like 20, 30 years before, it was maybe an issue for some microprocessors. I am not saying there are some microprocessors, still this may be an issue, but um, it is not a big issue, I would say. So if you want to insert more neurons for some reasons, then basically increase the width of the uh, radial basis function to cover an arbitrarily large D, right? You would like to cover this domain. Let's say initially you have three neurons. If you would like to cover a wider domain, you can insert, you can make their widths basically larger. This is like option B. Option A was, well, if you have three, and if you would like to cover a wider domain, in insert more neurons to cover a wider domain. Now, option three is, option C is, well, can you use a new theory to enforce error or state constraints to make your system trajectory X to stay on that compact domain? Actually, we solved this problem um, a couple of years ago, uh, 2018 or 19. Um, it is called Set Theoretic Model Reference Adaptive Control. More precisely, this was the first paper and the second one was Neuro Adaptive Set Theoretic. Something like this. I am not mentioning about option C. I will make a video uh, because it will be always good to, to ensure that, you know, you stay on this compact domain D. So for now, uh, please uh, consider options A and B. Um, they are widely adopted in the literature. Basically, make your compact domain arbitrarily large so that uh, your neural network approximation holds. But again, I am going to make uh, as we progress, uh, as we make progress on these adaptive control lectures, I am going to show you how to use um, fancy stuff to enforce constraints to make uh, X to stay at the compact domain D. All right, thanks.